Dr. Cook here. In this video, we're going to be giving an introduction to exterior ballistics. Okay, so exterior ballistics, what is that? Um, essentially, it's everything from the muzzle to the target, all of that flight in between that uh, happens in the air. Now, I've got an asterisk here about the muzzle because there is a thing called intermediate ballistics, also known as transition ballistics, that looks at that very narrow regime as we exit the muzzle uh, and transition into exterior ballistics. Um, there are some things that happen in that, that space very quickly, uh, but essentially from muzzle exit until we reach the target is exterior ballistics for purposes of this course. Now, I want you to think to yourself, uh, what are the forces that act on a projectile? Because that's what controls our motion, right? It's mechanical engineering. Um, everything has to do with forces uh, generating motions. Um, so just pause the video for a second and think about that. All right, so we've got a number of different forces that can be acting on our projectile. Gravity is the first one, the biggest one. Um, then we can talk about drag, because we're moving through the air, we're moving through some kind of medium. Uh, but then there's also things um, from the body itself. We have rotating uh, physics um, in our solid uh, body of the projectile. There's lift that might be going on based on its structures and design. And there's a lot more things that we're gonna learn about uh, as we go through this unit that can be acting on our projectile. All right now, why do we wanna do all this analysis for exterior ballistics? It really generally come down to two types of problems in exterior ballistics, right? The first one is I have a target, I wanna know how to hit it. How do I set up my guns so that I can hit that target downrange? What, what do I need to elevate my gun system at? How much velocity should I have um, to get to the target based on where I am and what its range is? Uh, the other way to look at the question and flip it around is where's the projectile going to go? So if I know everything about my launch system, about what velocity I have, what my elevations are, um, what kind of angles I'm at, uh, I can then calculate where the projectile will go over time to figure out where it will be in the future, right? So it's kind of, we can look at the problem forwards, we can look at it backwards. That's really the two ways of dealing with our exterior ballistics. All right, now to introduce this block, we're going to have to cover some terms so that we understand some things together. Um, and I want you to take a look at figure 7.1 on page 208 of the textbook. All right, it's a really good figure, and I'm going to walk you through some of the things in that. All right, this is the overall picture, um, and I understand that it can be overwhelming. There's a lot of things here, so let's go through and uh, kind of break down figure 7.1. All right, let's start out uh, with some simple things here. We have our origin of the gun, that's where we, we launch from at the muzzle. All right, and we have this base of trajectory, which is a level line, all right? It's an imaginary line. You can see here that if, we're, if we have a large enough uh, gun system like a howitzer, it might not necessarily be the ground um, for a lot of longer range things. And some of our equations will make the assumption that it and the ground are the same, but the base of trajectory is a level line, all right? Regardless of what the terrain is doing, all right? Now, you can see then that our point of impact, the thing we're trying to hit, might not necessarily be on that base of trajectory, so you always have to account for that. Um, but that's our point of impact is where it's actually going to land and impact with the ground, all right, which may or may not be on our base of trajectory. And uh, then we have a map range. Now you'll notice that the map range is not, um, you know, necessarily the range that we had to fly or uh, along the ground measurement. It's, a, it's as if we were looking at a map. So if you've got your military map and you measure that distance, what distance are you gonna get between those two points, which is from looking straight down onto uh, the world, all right? Okay, the maximum ordinate is just a fancy way of saying the highest that the, the trajectory is gonna go. All right, somewhere along that curve of the trajectory, the flight path of, of our projectile, there's gonna be a maximum uh, elevation that it goes through, all right? And that's the maximum ordinate point. Everything after that, it's gonna be headed downhill. Everything before that, it was headed uphill, basically. All right, at some point, the trajectory passes our base of trajectory, that's called the level point, all right? And if our point of impact is below that, then we're gonna pass through it and continue moving uh, until we, we hit something. Um, if our point of impact is above that, we might not actually pass through the level point. We have to understand where that level point is. It's, it's where the trajectory would intersect the base of the trajectory, all right, which is a level line. All right, uh, next then we have this line of sight because we've been talking a lot about this issue. The point of impact might not be level with the gun. <laughs> all right, so line of sight is the line from the muzzle to the target, all right, where it's gonna, the round is gonna impact with something. 
Um, and there's some angle that that might be at. We could be looking uphill, we could be looking downhill, but there's an angle of sight, all right? So that refers to that angle um, between the line of sight and our level base of trajectory. All right, now there's actually two ways that um, we kind of measure the, the, the elevation of, of how we come out of the gun, all right? The first one is the line of elevation. All right, that is if we drew that blue line there, it goes straight down the gun tube. All right, so the gun tube itself, just draw a straight line with that. That's your line of elevation. All right, what is that set at to launch our projectile? Now, the line of departure is the line, you'll notice there, that, that is um, tangent to the trajectory. So that's the line that we actually come out at, or that we're departing the muzzle from. All right, as we initiate our trajectory. Now, uh, those two things may not be the same and often aren't. <laughs> All right, there's a number of different causes and reasons for that. Um, everything from, you know, as we recoil, the gun itself actually moves and the line of elevation is how we set it up, but it's also just the projectile itself comes out at a little bit of angle. It has a velocity vector that doesn't necessarily align with the center line of the gun tube. All right, so our velocity vector defines our line of departure. The physical gun tube defines our line of elevation, and they may not be the same. And the difference between them is called vertical jump. All right, so vertical jump is that difference between the line of elevation, which goes down the physical gun tube, and the line of departure, that is our vector uh, for our velocity coming out of the muzzle. Okay, so uh, we've got this line of elevation that we set the gun at, all right? And that's one we can deal with because before we even fire, it's there. We can measure it very easily because it's defined by the physical gun system, all right? So the first uh, thing here is the QE, the quadrant elevation, all right? That is our angular measurement to the line of elevation, all right? Now that is measured from the base of the trajectory, all right? So it doesn't matter where our target is, we're taking a level line, and saying how far are we elevated above level, all right, above our base. Now, if we want to talk about what is the angle between the gun and the point of impact, our target, that's called the angle of elevation, all right? So the angle of elevation goes uh, from the target to the gun tube line, uh, the line of elevation, and the quadrant of elevation goes from our level baseline to what our gun tube is set at, all right? So those are two different angles, so keep those straight. All right, and then there's a third line, right? So we talked about this line of departure. So there has to be a way of, of measuring that, and that's called the quadrant elevation of departure. So quadrant elevation is coming off the base, elevated off the base, um, but it's to our line of departure, so it's of departure, not just the normal uh, quadrant elevation, which measures to the gun. All right, so let's sum up some of the key points here. All right, we talked about a line of elevation, and a line of departure, all right? And please remember, those are not equal to each other uh, in reality. We might make an assumption somewhere along the line that they equal each other as a simplifying assumption, but realize that that's an assumption. They are not the same terms, all right? The next thing is quadrant elevation, the QE, uh, is something that's measured from the level, all right? From a level line, the baseline, all right? And we can compare that against the angle of elevation which is measured from our line of sight that goes to the actual target, wherever that might be located above our gun, below our gun. All right, so keep those two terms straight. All right, and then here is that entire picture all put back together, and now we've kind of talked through all these different terms. All right, so you can mentally uh, kind of take those back apart and think about them. All right, so we need to get oriented to the projectile and um, understand what all of our angles and directions are. So I've got a sample projectile here. <laughs> all right, my projectile-shaped object. All right, so let's just imagine that the cap of the, uh, the bottle here is the point of our projectile that came out of the gun tube first. That is the direction that we are flying. All right, and let's talk about this. Now, on this, we have to talk about coordinate systems. All right, so within the projectile, we're going to define an x-axis that goes along the body of the projectile straight down the nose, all right, the center line that way, all right? So that is X, all right? And X is measured downrange uh, when we come out of the gun. Now, we're gonna then go ahead and define the Y axis as up, all right? So Y is up, all right? X and then Y. Now, if you think about that, because we tried to make a graph, um, 
uh, where uh, we had a, like a map, a side view, right? Y would be our elevation and X would be as we went down range. So X down the center line, Y is up. Now we got to get to Z, all right? Um, so we are going to have uh, Y, X points up, and then we're going to take Z out the right-hand side of our projectile. All right, I know that that's not a left-handed, uh, or that is a left-handed coordinate system, not a right-handed one, um, but that's the way we're going to do it, right? So X uh, goes down the projectile, Y is in the up direction, and Z sticks out the side, okay? Now, if we uh, rotate around the X axis, all right? So if we're doing this, we're spinning, that's called roll, all right, if you're not familiar with that. So this is rolling, all right? And it makes sense when you think about, all right, the X axis, this is roll, all right? Now, if we rotate around the Y axis, right? So we're doing this with our projectile, all right? That is yaw. All right, so that's yaw, all right, so this is the same terms we use with air, air, aircraft or any other kind of aerodynamics. Now, then we've got this Z that sticks out the side. If we rotate around that and we're going up and down, uh, that's pitch, all right? So pitch is gonna take us up and down, all right? Yaw is gonna take us side to side and roll is gonna spin the thing, all right? So spinning, that's roll, all right? We're yawing and we're pitching, all right? So that's how, now, when we're looking about projectiles, all right, we are often rifling them so that they come out spinning the whole way. So there's lots of roll. Now we don't let the Z axis and the Y axis rotate with it, all right? <laughs> Z and Y aren't fixed to the body. So even though this thing is rolling, all right, Y will always be up, all right? So it's still Y this way and Z always, uh, always out the side, okay? Now, that means that as we are pitching and yawing, all right, what very often happens is not only are we rolling, um, but we're pitching and yawing, and we're doing things like this, all right? Okay, and um, that can get confusing when we talk about pitch versus yaw. Uh, so in ballistics, we often combine those into what we call a total yaw, all right? Total yaw, um, which is a combination of how much did we pitch and how much did we yaw, uh, how much did we pitch and how much did we yaw, all right, into a total yaw angle. So even though we might be off like this, that's just a singular number uh, yaw angle, all right, total yaw angle. Okay, so continuing with our terms, I want you to take a look at figure 7.3 in the book that tries to capture everything going on with these angles, okay? So we wanna get this total yaw, alpha t, right? And we have to consider the yaw angle, alpha, and a pitch angle, beta, or just think of them as yaws in two different directions to generate a total yaw, all right? So all of this uh, triangles here with some trigonometry, all right? Um, gives us our total yaw, all right? And the equation for that uh, is here, all right? So we got sine of alpha t equals the sine, uh, square root of the sine squared of the beta plus the cosine squared times the sine squared of the alpha and beta there, all right? So that's how we can combine that and calculate out what would be this total yaw angle uh, alpha t. Right, and then here is the full uh, figure 7.3 in the book. So you can refer to that and then gives you a picture too of as our projectile is flying downrange, um, that green line there represents the trajectory that it's moving on. You'll notice the center of gravity moves on that, but the nose might not be pointed directly with it, all right, because we've got this yaw um, that's sitting there, right? So that's the difference between that velocity vector that's following the trajectory is tangent to the trajectory and the center line, the x-axis of the projectile, uh, which can be offset from that. As, and then on top of it all, we're rotating. All right, um, continuing on with our terms, um, we can spin up our projectile and have a spin stable uh, projectile, right? So this would be like coming out of a rifle. Now in these, we have a center of pressure, which is uh, the center point where all of the aerodynamic forces act, uh, which is forward of the center of gravity. All right, that'll make a spin stable. All right, the center of gravity being where all of the mass, the center of mass is, is acting and the gravity acts on. 
Um, or we can do something called fin stable. Uh, so if our center of pressure is aft of uh, the center of gravity, then we need to use fins. Um, so you think of a, a, the sabot round on a tank actually has fins on the back of it that help keep it stabilized um, because it's not spinning, right? And we use fins to help maintain that stability. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video. Um, hope to see you in class.